Welcome to episode 7 of Portal Talks with me, your host, Kyle Wall. Today's guest is Tom Fields of Financial Fitness with Tom. We dive into all things finances and how that relates to the fitness industry and the discipline you need in both budgeting as well as with an exercise program. Um, We'll also jump into some of the different programs that Tom has. He has some tips for just how to save some money uh, while I go on a couple rants about how really fitness and finances are a lot like just very very similar and that if your finances are on point then you're only going to have an easier time sticking to your fitness goals so let's dive right into it this is portal pp talk or portal talk as I changed it to, whatever. but <laughs> this is my podcast <laughs> uh, where we just talk about anything, fitness, health, all that stuff related. And then I think adding in the financial piece, which is always awkward and people don't like to talk about it, but it's something that like is a necessary, it's just, it's necessary. You have to like be structured with all this. But. Yeah, yeah, and and honestly, um, well, one, hey, I appreciate you bringing me on, um, and that's a great point because I think finance and and money um, and and actually fitness and and what you do tie in perfectly together. Yeah. Um, so you know, ho- hopefully, we can dive into that. It both both requires extreme diligence. Um, you gotta be consistent with both, and honestly, if you are consistent with both. Just like when you get on a roll at the gym, you know, if you get on a roll with your finances, you feel great and it, it becomes addictive. And um, yeah, man, I'm pumped to be on here. So thanks. Well, and they, I always like to think of it as they're two, they seem separate, but they both feed into each other. Like, yeah, if you have more money, you can take better care of yourself and invest in better f- quality food and, you know, better gym or whatever that's going to help facilitate that lifestyle. And Whereas like the fitness is also like, okay, if I'm eating, sleeping, I'm doing my thing, I'm strong, like I can invest back into my financials, which is I'm working better, I can get a promotion, I can do all this stuff. And it's just, that's how I've been looking at it. And it's yeah, just made more and more sense to me over time. But yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've, I've always, um, well, I guess I've always loved finances. and I've always loved, um, you know, working out and, and health. Um, and I guess, you know, I, I've, I've been on a pretty strict schedule with, with working out for a while. I wake up in the morning and the reason I get after in the morning is so I just have that natural energy to, to carry me through the day. Um, I think you're right. I mean, people, they, they think about, you know, when, when you, when someone comes to you as a, as a client and they say, I want to lose, you know, um, like 10, 15 pounds, whatever it is, you're never going to tell them, oh yeah, maybe we can do that in, in a week or two. I mean, could you just be, be lying? Right. And, um, you know, I, I just think it's funny when I, when I see some commercials and stuff about weight loss, it is a long journey. Um, and same with, same with finance. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the, really how I stand, uh, my brand, it's just kind of bringing it down to the fundamentals. Just like if you were going to try to, you know, lose weight, you wouldn't just go out and, and buy supplements and, you know, it's going to take care of that for you. I mean, you got to put in the damn work. And um, yeah, I just think, the, you know, there, there, there are two subjects that go completely together. Um, and it's, it's, it's not, obviously the fitness aspect is talked about a whole lot more. People are like pumped to to get on and flex for the for the IG, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to make people flex their wallet, and that's what uh, that's what we're that's what we're doing. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I like the idea of putting in the work, and that's something that it's also like, you know, at least from a like again, it's it's funny like connecting like the fitness and the financials, but it, it's something that's counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. I think like, you know, our brains don't want to put in work into something unless it's like something immediate. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And also, plus, you know, we got like cell phones and stuff, which literally like 
wire our brain to be like you know scroll scroll instant, scroll instant, instant, yeah. exactly it, it like is this dopamine man and but <laughs> like being able to just like see the long term and like just grind is something like i don't know i, I know you and i are both like on the same wavelength about that but it does say work man like with anything like it just if you're going to be truly successful at something you have to freaking grind yeah but oh, no yeah. but but also know how to put that grind towards something that's efficient and that's going to you know use your time as wisely as possible not just like yeah you know like you said commercials yeah. all that crazy stuff yeah no yeah I, no you're right it is it's a uh it, it is such a grind i mean i've been i've been doing you know workouts and and working on my health for six years like at least um and i've been getting better and better it's not i mean yeah some sometimes you have setbacks um and same with same with finance uh so i talk with clients you know we set up plans um you know we can get into kind of what financial fitness is all about here in right. a little bit but um you know just just in general talking about like you said that grind it it is it's so so hard to stay consistent um it's so hard to to make sure you're you're eating correctly and not blowing out your your macros with your with your fitness goals and it's so hard to um you know make sure that your budget's intact and you're not going out and you're you're spending money where you shouldn't be because the great thing about building wealth is the earlier you get involved and the more you are consistent in the market i mean you can grow to be extraordinarily wealthy and that's why i say it's bullshit the people that you know blame 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 their lack of savings on income dude get out of here i mean it's just like it's it's just like the same thing for people that i go to the gym you know five days a week and um I still got a beer belly. Why do you got a beer belly? Because you're drinking beer. You know what I mean? <laughs> why don't you have why don't why don't you have savings? Because you're spending all your money. I mean, it's like it's not the income, it's the expenses that people have to start focusing on. And that's what we're doing with financial fitness, is we're just kind of we're uncovering that onion, uh, we're peeling it back and we're 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 getting to you know the the problem, and that's people's budget and lack of education with in the, the investment world right and let's dive in so we just like jumped into this i didn't even like this is tom by the way yeah <laughs> this is tom with financial fitness and uh, tom uh, is like been a good friend of mine we're go back to fraternity days yeah <laughs> back at university and all that but um tom is a financial planner correct correct yep yep and then he's um got his own little business going called financial fitness correct yeah yeah, yeah i appreciate it Kyle. yeah man, man. Uh, tell me more about like what you're you said you're flexing your wallet you're building education and budgets like dude talk about it let's hear it yeah so i um you know i started i graduated obviously uk with a finance degree um always knew i wanted to go into this type of business uh i i work for a a um independent advisory firm we manage about a billion dollars. So, I mean, that's, that's the, that's the big boy. And that's kind of where all this started for me. Um, and where I was able to learn for, for, for majority of my career. Um, but what I realized is that our generation, so millennials, um, we, we have, we are the generation of like the credit card and social media. Um, and when you combine both of those together, it's, it's trouble. Yeah. I mean, it is like, just like you said, instant gratification, people are just unhinged with spending. Um, and we have a serious issue in our, in our generation. And that's because we're not doing the right things right, right now to allow us to, to live the life we want to live later on. And, um, you know, everyone has been told, Hey, you got to save for retirement, but when I was talking with individuals, it, it was always how how do I save, and you know how how do I get started, and I realized that the financial advisory world, you know, the average financial advisor is fifty five years old. Okay, so they're way beyond 
um, the start of their career. They have a very mature book of business. And it's so hard to approach a financial advisor um, when, when you're our age because it, you know, there, there's snakes in the grass and that does just like anything else. There's bad people. So you got to make sure you're, you're doing your homework. And we could talk about that later. But the, the point is, is that it's just a hard barrier of entry. I mean, there's really no education out there. Um, the, the, the industry is very much fragmented. If you were to Google, you know, how to save, you're going to get like 10 different answers. Um, so the, the, so really that was the inception of financial fitness with Tom. Um, and, and this is just a, a, a platform that I've developed that we're, we're doing two things. Uh, we're, we're fixing people's budgets and then we're providing investment education. So once your budget is fixed, once you have that cash flow available, which everyone can get to, I mean, it just requires work. Once you have that cash flow available, I'm giving you the tools uh, from an educational standpoint so you can start making those, those decisions um, that, that are going to better, better your life. So it's, it's kind of a two-step process. Um, my, my motto is building stronger individuals through budgeting and financial education. Uh, and again, you know, it, it correlates just with fitness and working out. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, you're, you're doing great things with your clients. Um, you know, whether that's improved flexibility or just making people more confident in their movements. Um, you know, it, it just starts with the education and then just being consistent and knowing what to do for, for yourself. Well, and I mean, the more you're like talking about it, the more I'm like hearing, you know, the fitness world, like it's all muddled. Like, yeah. like you said, fragmented, all that you do the same thing. Like, how do I squat? How do I do this? If I Google it, it's going to be everyone and their mother's opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it's yeah, like, exactly. man, like, how can we like get true education out there that's actually going to better people and their situations that they're actually in right now? And I think you do a good job, like you said, of like covering specific, you know, like, hey, here's this demographic. They need this kind of help right here, right now and yeah go ahead yeah yeah it's it's and i think the great thing about millennials i mean us yeah. is like we, we are no doubt going to be the leaders of, of this country here i mean i think our our generation is so powerful we're revolutionary i mean companies that have been started by our generation are the front runners i mean mm -hmm. you think about like the jack dorsey at twitter and the mark zuckerberg and all these other companies um, you know, younger CEOs and uh, Snapchat, you know, all that good stuff. We're, we're, we, we have the, the, the ability to, to really ch change our, our country for the better, but I think we also have to make sure that we're, we're taking care of ourselves. Um, and it just comes down to, you know, knowing what to do and being comfortable with, with this thing called personal finance. And it's an uncomfortable subject. People don't like to talk about it. Um, you, you know, you, you get on social media and you see what looks like instant success, but that's some bullshit. Uh, it, there ain't no instant success. <laughs> Just like, you know, you see people working out and they got some six pack. They can get that from just doing, you know, a little, you know, flares or kick kick kicker flares whatever you know yeah. i mean they're doing other things that 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 give them that that uh that look so it's um you know it's just about being honest and 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 really taking control yeah how do you do you provide like resources right now like i know you've been doing like a lot of like online videos and stuff like that um how does the education look like yeah yeah so um so again, like I, when I was thinking about financial fitness, um, I was just like, man, this just correlates with, with working out. And I, I just, I just love, love going to the gym and giving all I got and leaving a better, better individual every day. And so when I started financial fitness, uh, there's two programs, there's budget boot camp, and then there's HIT, uh, which stands for high intensity investment training. So budget boot camp. I think what separates financial fitness from other tools you might see is I'm actually providing my, my personal budgeting tools. 
Um, so this is something that I've, I've created for a very long time. And really, it, they're, they're, there's a monthly budget tool and there's an expense budget tool. Um, I won't go into the, the fine details there, but the most important thing is that I'm giving you, you know, something that will work. Uh, you just got to, you know, take initiative. And then with Budget Bootcamp, it's a four-week process, and it's four weeks for, for a very simple reason. Uh, you got to know the start to finish, you know, look of, of a month of your cash flow. So if we can get down, you know, how much money you're bringing in, how much money you're spending, and then what you have left over. Obviously, the point of Budget Bootcamp is to build that bottom line, so what you have left over as big as possible. Um, so, you know, we're, we're working through week one to week four, we're using the tools and then I'm providing a, a guide so you can tailor these tools to your lifestyle. Um, and then naturally when someone has the cash, they're ready to go, they're ready to get in the market, they want to invest. Then we start talking about, Hey, what's an IRA? What's a Roth IRA? You know, what's asset allocation, risk and benefits. I mean, that is hit. That is that is, you need to know what these things mean in order to start making good decisions. So we're finding cash flow, and then we're applying it um, with, with education, and that that's kind of the natural journey. Yeah, with, you're with just you got to master the basics, man. You got to be able God, to man. know, like, just yeah. I mean, hey, dude, I do the same thing. Like, that's literally, you gotta <laughs> gotta take care of all the the basic foundational stuff, and then you can start adding the fun layers and the flair and all that stuff yeah i mean like when you when you're when you're working with a client you know what are you doing first you're probably stretching you know what i mean it's like you gotta warm up you gotta you gotta understand you're not gonna like tell someone okay hey we're gonna work on your squat so let's just rack like a couple plates on here and here you go like right. <laughs> good luck you know it doesn't work like that i mean you gotta build it up so um it's just, it's the same thing. And it's something that I just truthfully don't necessarily see right now in the marketplace um, that's tailored for, you know, the, the millennial generation. I think how I'm delivering it, it's, it's sitting a little bit better than, you know, having a, having a 50, 60 year old, you know, kind of tell you what to do. Um, yeah. You know, that, that, that ain't gonna, that ain't gonna fly. <laughs> yeah. It's not. Yeah, the communication there is can be different and difficult at times, <laughs> for yeah. sure. Um, so in terms of like, so you got this, you know, financial fitness with Tom, you're mastering basics with folks. How would you, I guess, like, give me like, I think something that really, like when I first started looking into like my finances and all that, like my personal journey with my finances was like, at first it was, like I had no idea what the hell it was, like how to even like go about it. And then I kind of went into this, like, you know, started watching some conspiracy stuff. I'm like, dude, I hate money. This is the worst <laughs> thing ever. Like, I just don't want anything to do with it. And then I like progressed from that to like, oh, like I'm actually starting to understand like the fundamentals of like what money is and how it relates to like my time and what I do and my mm -hmm. effort um, and that really started to like clarify and made me more comfortable with the concept of money um, versus mm -hmm. it just being like you know I, whenever I talk to folks about it or if I get the chance to it's always one or the other like they either love it or they hate it yeah there's no like really in, or they don't know anything they just avoid yeah. it. well it's 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 like I don't, you know, for me, it's, it's hard to make. I mean, dude, we're busting our ass to, to, to make money. So like, we gotta, yeah. when it comes in, you gotta start taking care of it. Well, and like you and I are also in, again, it's counterintuitive to how the human brain works, like money, yeah. fitness, like it's things that you don't want to do naturally. Like no. I, you don't want to go work out. Like that's literally the opposite. Like, we're meant to store and save energy and do all this stuff and survive. You don't want to do it. <laughs> like, and yeah. I yeah. Yeah. It's so like, 
I feel like I'm waking up and I'm like, man, I'm going to put $500 into my Roth IRA today. It's like, yeah, hell like, no. It's, I want to do that shit. Like, I want to go out and buy something or, you know, whatever, enjoy myself. But exactly. it's, you know, just the same thing. If you're waking up and you're, you're going to the gym, you know, you, you literally walk out of there feeling incredible. I mean, it is, I don't care who you are you feel better once you leave the gym than when you walk in. Um, and the goal of, of taking care of your, your finances now is by eventually, and I, and I swear to you, eventually you'll get to a point where your money is working for you and stress is, is going to be eliminated from your, from, from yourself. Um, you know, when you can get to a point where your investment accounts are kicking off serious cash flow, uh, it is it is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to watch, and it's not easy to get there. I mean, there's a reason why uh, people live on Social Security. You know, it's just that's you don't want to be you don't want to be there. But people are there because they just didn't pay attention. Um, you know, there's a reason why we have severe obesity in this country and obviously you don't want to be there but people are there because they didn't pay attention and they just didn't give a shit i mean they don't care and guess what what, what does it lead to it leads to just a, a poor lifestyle right and it's funny that you bring up again man like these fields they just they mesh they really do they overlap so much like getting like stress when you brought up stress man like what's the number one thing people are stressed out about and it's always financials always and then that stress either it hinders people from wanting to work out they use it as an excuse they do whatever they can so it's just this constant and i think at per and again personally like like i said like when you clarify and you see the big picture of like what money is and like how it can work for you and how you can invest and do all this stuff it really does like it takes away i guess that that excuse or that fear in some ways whatever it is for you mm -hmm. um i know it did for me and it was just kind of i don't know man it's weird <laughs> yeah and and it's it's like you know getting into the more business aspect of it there's the more you're educated, there's ways out there that, um, you know, like no one, none of us like paying tax. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's, it sucks. Um, yeah. and there's tools out there that if you are aware of, of, of how to implement, okay, I just went out, I got my own business. I'm crushing it. Um, you know, I'm bringing in, let's say, I don't know, a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, you know, so, 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 look what you can do because you understand that, Hey, I'm bringing in this money. I understand my budget. I don't want to pay tax right now. I'm going to set up my own 401k, which, you know, I'm sure if, if, if you work for a company that's offered sole proprietors, if you run your own business, you can do the exact same thing. You set up your own 401k. You can defer a whole bunch of money in there. You're not paying any tax on it. It's growing tax free. And then when you're retired and you're in a lower tax bracket than you are now, you start making distributions, paying yourself. Guess what? I mean, you're, you just accumulate so much wealth tax-free and right. now you have the ability to control your taxable income. And yeah, that sounds, maybe it sounds like second language to some people, but like the people that understand, you know, they, they, at least, they at least get it to a point where this is a good idea. I mean, man, you 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 start you start putting tax free dollars to work, and uh, you just, it's crazy. I mean, it, it, it's good. It, it's, it's a way to build build wealth. Yeah, dude, you get me hyped up. Like I never thought in my life I'd get like hyped about like money and like talking about money. Like I said, dude, like there were like two years where like you ever watched? Um, oh, what are they on Netflix? Um, Zeitgeist or uh Dude. yeah I, th I feel like i've heard i feel like i've heard of, heard of that I, I, I don't know if i've watched there's them. like three of them and they're all just like illuminati and like money and all this stuff and i was <laughs> like dude 
I hate this. I'm going to go live in a freaking tent in the woods forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know it is. It's like, uh, it's, it's people and it's, they're, they're just, they're scared, man. And it's, it's just like people are probably a little bit intimidating to work with, you know, with you. It's like you're showing results, but people know that in order to get those results, I got to yeah. sacrifice something. I mean, yeah. something's got to give in order in order to, to achieve what I want. Mm -hmm. And people get very intimidated about a change in lifestyle. For sure. Um, well, and especially when they're dealing with biases, like what, like when you think of personal trainer or like physical therapist, like what's the first thing that pops in your head? At least for a personal trainer, you think of like, dude, 80s guy and like, yeah, like yeah. He's cut off gold's and, gym. Yeah, like, gold's yeah. gym. And then like, you know, you have the biases of like financial, like you're talking about the snakes in the grass, like that's immediately like what you think of, like that's what we associate with. Like, yeah, dude, we don't work in easy industries. Like, no, man. <laughs> especially well, when look, I'll tell honest. you what, but what we're both doing, which I think is is so awesome, and that's why you gotta love social media. Um, is we're it, it's given us the ability to put out just great educational content that people can run with and, and start at least making some, some good decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I enjoy just, just doing that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm sure yeah. you can say the same. Providing the education just to yeah. like, I, dude, if I can just like provide like any sort of clarity on something to where th someone has just that like aha moment, like that's all it is, man. Yeah. Like right there. Like it's, it's being a teacher. I mean, it's like, I don't, I don't think there's any better feeling than like for me, when I can see someone who has a serious debt problem, let's say student loans or something, mm -hmm. and we're able to work through a situation where in a matter of three or four months, you know, they've just absolutely crushed their goals. And because, you know, something switched in their head where it's like, okay, this, I need, I need to start taking action and I need to start being a better person with, with my money. And I mean, that it's like, it's just like the best feeling and same with personal training and, and physical therapy and clients. If someone has a you know lower back issue and they're going to a chiropractor and it's not working and now they're, you know, using your services and you're able to, you know, work out the right muscle groups and they're, you know, they say to you, man, I've never felt this good in my life. I mean, that, that's why we do it. Exactly, man. It's yeah. It's, it's a service industry, you know? Yeah. It's, you know, you got to serve the people around you and help build other people up. And I mean, in some ways, and like, it's great ways to invest in yourself too. Like, that's kind of like one of the main reasons I got into this stuff was like, at least in fitness, I was like, dude, I like doing this. And then I got hurt and I was like, oh, well, I want to learn how to fix myself. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's like investing <laughs> in yourself. So, you know, I guess it's not, I'm being a little selfish, but it's like, Hey, if I can help other people feel this good, like, Oh yeah. On with that. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I, uh, you know, I get to talk to people about their budgets and what they're doing, you know, and, and, and the other thing that's awesome is being in this business and the service industry is you're a, you're a people person and people want to, people want to work with, with, with people in our industry because they, like the individual obviously you know and they respect what they're delivering when it comes to the value but like it, it comes down to you know liking the individual and i just love you know being able to hear other people's stories what they're doing in business that's making them successful you know their failures that happen along the way um it just creates real conversations and you know that that's that's invaluable as well so right. um, yeah do you have any like specific like someone could take this piece of advice and apply it like either just like a sole proprietor, someone who has like a small business kind of deal, or even someone that has like just a regular, you know, nine to five, like what's the biggest piece you got right now? Yeah. Hey, one out. Uh, I'm going to, one second. All right, I'm going to get nerdy. I'm going to get nerdy on us and pull this thing out. So 
Yeah, that's a great question. I'm happy to answer that. Um, I think going back to, I guess what you, you know, people who listen to this or they, they're, they're a lot, of, I mean, they're nine to five and probably in their own business. I would yeah. say we got a combination of both. Yeah. I mean, it's, I would say I, with my podcast, like it's been a lot geared toward, you know, both, I have a combination of trainers yeah. and like people that are working and they are doing small business. And then I also have like client like potential clients and stuff like that. So okay, we'll edit this well, out, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, uh, the people that are, you know, doing training and, and, you know, this is, this is like either it could be a full time or, uh, you know, side it's, it's side income right. right now, but you know, obviously the goal is if you love it to make it full time. I just want to go back again. We're talking about, you know, retirement and the best way again is what I said to build wealth is to, to use retirement accounts and um, retirement accounts are a way to, you know, put, put money that hasn't been taxed into an account. It's going to just grow tax free and um, you know, it really adds up. So to people who uh, the, the biggest takeaway right now is, let me just do this math real quick. So if you could, if you can find $500, okay. So $500, you know, and it's $125 a week. Okay? I mean, we can do that, guys. I, I don't, there's something that you can sacrifice uh, that isn't benefiting you or, you know, we, we can, we can figure, we can find 125. Okay. So if you're able to do that for a very long consecutive time, put 30 years um, where, Okay, so we're putting $500 a month away for 30 years. Now, before I say this, because people are going to call me crazy, the S&P 500, which what that is, is it's the biggest 500 companies in the United States blended together. So it's literally just gives you a benchmark of the overall market. So in the past 40 years, S&P 500 has increased over 11% every year for the past 40 years so it's an average so it doesn't happen it's not like 11 percent, 11 percent, 11 percent. it's like 20 percent down three percent up two percent up you know 12 percent. that's how the market works but eventually you know it, it is it, it's a nice steady increase um so i'm going to use nine percent on this math year which is actually underneath the average of the s p so we're going to do a nine percent rate of return we're starting with zero dollars. So these are people that are listening right now. We don't have anything saved. We're gonna start in the month of May. We're gonna do five hundred dollars. Okay. You do that, just five hundred dollars for thirty years. Don't miss. Don't miss, baby. You can have <laughs> one point one million dollars. That's all it is, man. You're a millionaire. I yeah. mean, so it's like we can find 125 a week, put it away, invest it, go, you know, this is money that can be pre-tax too. So that's not after tax. Um, that, that, that's, that's, you know, after tax is a little bit more difficult to do, but Hey, if you can do that, you know, 125, that, that, that's, that's good for you. But that's what I'm saying, guys. It's about, you know, and if it, it's just like, it's time in the market, it's investing early and often. I mean, that is the, it's the that's the advice I would, I would give anyone. It, it, it's, it's not that hard. I mean, I, I've, it, you know, I, I've seen baggers at grocery stores with, with hundreds of thousands of dollars in their retirement account. And they're making, you know, it's not because they're making crazy money. Obviously, they're bagging groceries, but mm -hmm. what do they do? They're consistent with their savings. And that, you know, they just, they just put it away and let the market do its thing. So for the people out there who, um, you know, have a side business, look into, it's called a solo 401k. It's, it's, it's really just an unbelievable tool. Um, you can defer a shit ton of money, free tax, actually up to $56,000 if you want. Um, you know, you, you get to those levels and yeah, you, know, you just got you got a you got a whole bunch of money down the road. Right, but, and um, I've even seen like you know, 
for especially for like millennial generation like that's like minimum something that you need like of like pretty much a million dollars saved up for your retirement you have to have that in order to really be able to survive dude think of this so you get a job uh when you're you know 21 right 22 call 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 22 okay and then we want to what retire when we're 60 i don't know or 65 so that's 40 you know 43 years right yeah something like that 43 years okay of work and then when are we gonna die i don't know if 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 we're healthy i bet a lot of us will be pushing 100 with healthcare coming here you know what i mean so then you're living for another at least 40 so you're trying to retire for the same amount of time as you're as you're working um so yeah you need to have a whole bunch saved if you're if you want to do that i mean you you and if you even think that you're going to be banking on like social security, dude, you better get your shit together because yeah, uh, I'm that, not even, uh, I don't even consider <laughs> it. It's not even part of the plan. That, that, that's, a, that's a thing in the past, man. Yeah. It, I literally, I don't even consider it as part of my plan in the future, like with my own like budgeting, like it's just, cause I know it's not going to, it's probably, who knows what the hell is going to happen with it. Like yeah. not, like you said, you can't bank on it, but, and I think, Again, man, you, this is why these, I really like just like the financial fitness, like aspect, like what you're doing is just because it's, again, you were talking about potentially pushing, you're going to live for a hundred years or like till you're like a hundred or something or in the nineties. Do you also want to have like a quality lifestyle? So yeah. that's both financially, you don't want to be, you know, month to month, have your strict budget and you know, you're eating ramen noodles at 90 and you also don't want to be super sick and consistently, you know, having in and out of hospital dealing with all this stuff. Like we all have, you know, grandparents or we've seen elderly folk that have been in these situations and it's, you know, take note, this be honest with yourself. Dude, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, you want to be able to move when you're older and in order to move, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to be able to squat when I'm 60. I mean, I don't know, like, yeah. <laughs> might as well. I'll give it a ride, 225. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, you gotta, you gotta just be consistent. It's just, and I, I agree. And that's really like the thought of, of this program is it's, it's, I think for the people who have had success in the gym, they, they can crush the the world of finance because they know what it takes um there's already, the there's already that, discipline there and it's just being able to tap into that same sort of discipline yeah and then i think also just for folks that may not be as disciplined to the gym or even like financials it's like you know like you said you got fitness people who have already tapped it they just need to tap into what they already have and then other folks that may not have both fields covered right now like you I'm sure you have something that you're disciplined with and it's how to take that and train it and bring it over to these other facets of your lifestyle. And, and I want people to also understand it's like a budget isn't bad at all. Working, you know, working out, going to the gym is not bad at all. Um, think of, think of life like this. If you could, if you were to go on a vacation, and you budgeted ten thousand dollars for it. Let's just say you're going to fall out on a vacation, and you start going through the vacation. You're like, "Damn, um, you know, I mean, I'm not even close to spending ten thousand dollars." And then all of a sudden, you see something that's like, "Hey, it's a, you know, it's a maybe a package for two, and you want to like maybe change plans." And you you have this. You are planning on spending this money because you worked for it and you budgeted for it and you put a label on that money and it's, it's being spent. So what does that do? I mean, it literally opens up so much freedom for you. It's not like you're, yeah, you could come back and you could apply that money elsewhere, but like for the people that actually truly have a budget, you have it budgeted for that vacation. So spend it. I mean, and it goes for it. That, that, that's a, that's a more extravagant example, but like, even if you're going out to dinner, um, you know, you have a gift card. If you have a gift card, you're, you're, you're going to freaking drain that thing. I mean, at that one, 
you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. it gives people, you love going to restaurants when someone gives you a gift card because you, you know, I'm going to just get a bottle of wine or I'm going to get some dessert, whatever. And if you have a budget, it just, it gives you so much flexibility and so much of a peace of mind because you know exactly what you can do. It, there is no more guessing. There is no more, oh, I don't know if I should spend this. Okay, do you have the money budgeted? Then yes, yeah, spend it. Just like going to the gym. It's like you walk into a gym with a plan, or you should if, you, if you're not. I mean, and if you, you know don't, it's, it's, you probably have been jumping from bandwagon to bandwagon, falling yep. off, all this stuff. And it's, yep. You're not I mean, seeing success. It's, it, it, it is. It just, it, it correlates. I mean, it, and that's again, I think for the people, especially on this, this podcast, this audience, just know that like you, you know, you're, if you're listening to this, you're obviously, you're, you're taking the right steps with your life and, and fitness and you got what it takes um, to, to really shine when it comes to, to being successful with your money. But you you might not understand how to do it and you know there's i mean i i i'm I'm here to help there's other people that are there to help um but you got what it takes i mean it's putting that it's that initial drive to get it done you got all this free content out there now too yeah and it's there like it's exactly it's quality that's the thing like you know it's stuff that you know i wouldn't put a program out that i've never done before that I've never seen results with yep. and then try yeah. to like, you yeah. know, like I, I, that's just not, it's not good business, I guess. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't know. And it, and it won't work. I mean, yeah, but... you, the most successful businesses are, are things that I mean are just proven. Um, yeah. And that's why with like budget boot camp, I was like, when I was thinking about, you know, at first I was like, man, I should I just be giving advice. I'm like, no, I'm going to literally give people exactly what I do. And, and I'm going to teach them how to use it. And I'm not saying I'm a king at my budget, but I will say that I know exactly how much money I have at the start, the beginning of the month and how much, you know, it's going where it's, it's very much methodically thought out mm-hmm. and um, being me doing this for an extended period of time, I've, able, I've, I've been able to build assets um, and I'm going to continue to do it definitely not even close to being where i need to be now but yeah. um eventually i will and um it is one of the things tells me I'll, I'll be good to go here so just gotta keep keep at it <laughs> right. well and it's one of those things too it's like you know once you find one thing that works like just keep doing it like just yeah. do it over and over like that's it, if it's broke or if it's not broke don't fix it kind of deal that's like really yeah, how i try I mean, to look at it didn't you, didn't you like increase your vertical a certain amount? Uh, I, I remember seeing that. Oh yeah. I, so I program a lot of isometric holds. It's specifically like a lunge position. Mm-hmm. Man, you do that as long as you can each leg each day. And like I added, I added three inches to my vertical. So I got up to wow. 30 inches. My, wow. I like, Gave him a little program, and he increased his by seven inches. No way. Just being consistent. Yeah, but that's the, but that's what it is. It's like you said, oh, you hold the isometric lunge, you know, every day or whatever it is, whatever your program says, mm-hmm. and like it works. I mean, why? Because you're literally building your your. You could go that, yeah. but I'm just gonna say you're building <laughs> muscle. You know, I don't know. Right, but something's happening. Oh, Got all kinds man. of good stuff happening. Yeah. So budget budget boot camp looks month to month, senior cash flow. What do you think about these next couple months with all the uncertainty and corona? What are you looking at yeah. month to month right now? Well, there's two there's two answers to that. There is, you know, what's your goal? And uh then that's gonna decide what I what I say. So for people, for, for that example, I just give, it doesn't matter because if it's for in a retirement account or we're, we're building that thing toward we're 60. So, um, you know, just keep, keep at it, but rain or shine. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, a more, I guess, specific answer of, of what I think, um, we, this has been extremely interesting. 
we had a market sell off that we've never had before. It was horrific. It happened so quick. Um, people were shitting their pants, but it's already, it's called kind of like a V shaped recovery. So we started here, it dropped. And now we're probably about right, right here. It happened very quickly. Um, and we're, we're still in that recovery phase. But the thing that is helping out the market is people can remember 2008. Um, the Federal Reserve is kind of like the king when it comes to um, you know holding the economy, the world economy up. And just like anyone who you know, you were, people learn from their mistakes. 2008 was a horrible mistake um, by not only our banks. I'm sure, you guys have maybe watched like, The Big Short, but like the Federal Reserve did not act quick enough. Okay, like yeah, there was a bailout, but it just didn't happen quick enough. With this coronavirus, they are going all in so quick. So the stimulus checks that people receive and all these loans that are available that are forgiven. And there's all these other things I won't bore you, but like it's there's so much money that was just thrown into the to the economy by our government that it kind of acts like a backstop. And I truly believe that we're gonna come out of this because of all that stimulus. Um, potentially, you know, much more stronger uh, than 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 we were before, and, and you know, it's going to come down to, you know, maybe you you'll start seeing it when when gyms open up. I mean, are people are going to be afraid to get close to each other? Um, you know, we're going to have to see how how individuals react to to when things open back up. But if we can get back to some sort of normality, I, I really truly think that. Um, you know, it's, it looks, it looks good. I mean, I think there's, there's, there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel. Well, even with just from a personal finance standpoint, having a stimulus check, that's 1200 bucks that people got extra on a month or yeah. that they may have never even had in their savings at one point. So yeah. that acts as a buffer that de-stresses people that helps a lot. And then you look at all the money that was given to corporations like you're saying all that money that's out there for small businesses they can stay afloat even without as much or any income so when yeah. you come back from all this yeah and i'm curious there you know, and we, we kind of talked about it uh before this i'm curious to how the world looks after um i think that you know online businesses like what we're doing are obviously becoming more popular but like just running your business virtually is in the, in the type of companies that might be established new leaders that will start to, you know, pop up companies that were created in 2008, Uber, Lyft, Snap, things that you see every day now. Um, you know, what are the companies going to be like after this? I don't, I don't know, but like something, something will happen. Um, and, yeah, it, it is. It's like, I don't know. It's just we're gonna go into a whole different type of era, I think. Do you follow any of the esports or not esports, uh, like just online gaming stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. They <laughs> they had a motocross. My buddy's really big into motocross racing, and a bunch of the racers were just playing as themselves or one of their buddies online and had millions of people watching them play video games yeah and then nuts yeah and there's all kinds of, <laughs> I mean, and like the gaming industry by itself has i think it's gone up i don't know how many percentage points but it's one of those that continuously goes up and up and up and up yeah and then you're put in a situation like this where no one can leave their house and there's no like actual sports like we had the nfl yeah. draft but yeah, the whole, uh, the whole, the last dance documentary, that's going to be like the most watched yeah. documentary ever because like everyone's just like, give me sports, right? you know, and you get to watch Michael Jordan, but um, no, it's, I mean, this, and this is not like a, a stock tip, so don't uh, take any advice from this, but it's just what has happened, um, you know, with what you said, no one's leaving home. I mean, there's a company called Teladoc, um, you know, you can yeah. publicly trade it has just exploded in value 
from all this. I mean, has gone from $70 a share to $180 a share in this year. So it, but that's because, you know, is that a long-term success story? I don't know, but I think what they're doing is spot on. I mean, you can tune in to a physical therapist, you can tune in to your doctor um, online. Now, obviously there's certain things that, you know, you gotta be hands on with, but like if we can eliminate just the old, you know, little checkup that you go and on the scale and they, they check your ears out and you're done. I mean, you just sit there on the table awkwardly. Yeah. Why they yeah. <laughs> I waste my time. Yeah. So right. yeah, well, that's, just that's what my, that's what portal PT is. It's an online physical therapy service where, I mean, everyone's heard this like a thousand times if you're listening to this, but it's the same thing. It's all just online and there's other clinics that are now doing an online approach and they had to integrate your typical mom and pop physical therapy gym or clinic. They had to shut down during all this. Like they can't put their hands on people. They can't do anything. And now they all have a online branch of telehealth or remote, you know, training and physical therapy that they'll have forever now. And if they, yeah. it, if they want, if they don't want to, that's really, it's a whole nother option and potential income stream for people doing this type of. Yeah, it, it is. And it's, I think, you know, we, 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 we talked, we spoke about it uh, earlier and I like this bring it up a little bit, like what, what we're doing um, is so incredible because we have the ability to deliver advice and deliver education and yeah, we're putting in the work behind the scenes, but like the cost of doing all of this, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of sweat equity, but like, I don't need to rent out an office space and I don't need to, you know, have a fancy desk and all of this. Like, I just need my camera here. I need my brain and I need Instagram and whatever social media outlet that we want to deliver on. And um, I think the ingenuity and just, it's gonna it, it it's the start to potentially some you know a new era that uh everyone should be capitalizing on um you know there's there's always people that are, are wanting to learn and you know portal pt was spot on with i think the physical therapy aspect of it teledox kind of more of the medical professional but um you know everyone that's out there hustling and 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 trying to deliver what they know best Uh, to the public you know i think it's i just think it's awesome to see yeah everyone's getting creative under times of stress like this people get creative and they make awesome interesting things that can change up people's lives yeah like you said uber all that like crazy everything who who knows what's coming man i'm telling you something's gonna happen you remember the first uber you took do you like remember calling it yeah, I do actually, because it was uh, it was the night before um, uh, Thanksgiving, and I remember I was like, "Wait, I can literally stay at the bar and drink and watch my cab like come and pick me up." <laughs> right. I was like, yeah, I'm good. Sign me up, man. My first yeah, one. Was- it was this weird point because I had just turned 21, so I had taken the cab maybe two or three times but most of the time we would just walk from university yeah all the way up you know back in lexington and it was that summer uh (laughs) and they gave out all the free uber rides oh yeah had them for like two weeks of free rides and we would just share the codes and just some random dude comes and picks you up and you're like crazy all right man and now it's like i couldn't imagine ever taking a cab or uh, you no, know, it, 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 it's 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 convenience um you know which i think is a good and a bad thing like our prior conversation i think people want that instant gratification when it comes to you know the results in the gym because they're used to being able to press a button and cap come pick them up um you know you can press a button and get your gr- groceries delivered now but it's same thing with going again back to you know being better with your your finances it's there is nothing easy about it um and that's what we're we're trying to do here is just give people the tools you know and and, and really just make sure there's no doubt 
uh, about it that at the end of the, the four weeks, um, if you decide to do like a budget boot camp or a hit, I mean, you're you'll be ready to rock because it's it's just it's just when you sign up, you're ready to go. Uh, it's you're not gonna like sign up and 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 give it a half ass thing. That's just not how it works. Even if you're you know with anything, if someone's signing up for you, I mean they're ready to make change. So, um, well, and I think this is like a really good opportunity as well. Like if you can figure out how to find extra cash right now, if you maybe don't have a job or you're working reduced hours and you're still putting cash away, then how much more can you put in toward that when all this is over? How much better can your plan be when this, because they will go away. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing with my clients too. I'm saying, Hey, I'm not going to program you something that's truly going to add a ton of muscle mass right now or anything specific to gym related equipment instead let's focus on this let's get your structure sitting well let's your posture whatever it is let's keep what you got and then prepare for when this ends and yeah you're ready to go it's a great great point um no i think and, and it's like i was thinking about life now and it's like is this i, I kind of forget what life is like I, you know outside of this i've been such a minimalist which has been good with my budget um it's so easy right now because i'm just sitting at home but going back to the the workout i mean i've actually i don't know about you but um i've been doing home you know little home workouts I, i've done so many damn burpees i don't think i'm ever gonna do a fucking burpee after this <laughs> i'm done with burpees but um it's like i've actually lost weight during the the quarantine um which has been kind of interesting i wish i would have took like a before and after um i just didn't know it was gonna be this extended but i feel like i'm I'm doing i think my strength is still there uh but i've lost weight because i've been able to you know know exactly what i'm gonna eat um i've been doing uh, actually like an extended fast um and that's because i've been just working from home and I can just kind of pop in the kitchen whenever I want. And I've just been strict with it and I've been doing body weight movements and um, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of been nice um, to just kind of focus on the fundamentals and it just, I was kind of shocked that I actually I've lost like six pounds. It's there you go. Crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> man. I, it really like, it's simple. That's it. They add from, from anyone listening to this, like simple doesn't sell <laughs> a lot of the time. Yeah. Like if you really make it super simple, it just doesn't. I don't know why. It's I, yeah. we, just, we just like the flair and all that. But consistency, like you said, just having your diet right and then moving. Honestly, just move more and you're going to see some sort of result mm-hmm. toward your goal. Or, I mean... I've been focusing more on plyometrics and sprints and I probably, I probably haven't been this fast since senior year of high school when I was running track. Yeah. So it's I, crazy. Yeah. The results. I love following what you have to say, man. I mean, it's, I, I think I just relate personally because I went from just going into the gym, like doing lifts, not really having any like understanding to seeing people, seeing people like what you post. And now, like, I know exactly, like, what muscles I have to engage when I lift. I mean, it's one thing, like, when you're benching or doing a push-up to just, like, you know, boom, pop it out. But it's, like, if you can control everything, keep your muscles under tension, flexing your abdominal core, you know, like, it, everything just starts to build. And when you're doing those sprints and stuff, I mean, you know, you're, I mean, that's just such great. It's basic. You're just spring, but it's just great, great leg workouts. Um, Man, you know, work out the knees. There's a study that was done, and for you to truly propel yourself forward in a sprint, you have to put nine times your body weight, like a force, through one leg at a time. Like you mm. can't recreate that in a gym. Like no. <laughs> you can't. No. So, and there's times like you're talking when we do want to control the movements, we want to feel everything. But also, those are for your specific days. And then the other days, you're 
probably not like we're moving weight you're sprinting you're going all out and that's mm. not the the control isn't the focus the control mm. is on these days that's there for you to make this stuff better essentially your mm. max lift your whatever it is your strength your sprint your sport so yeah. you don't have to think about that when you're doing it yeah. and i think that's what a lot of people forget about it's control what you can control over here and then ball out when you <laughs> when it's yeah. time to ball out it is it's like it's i yeah i and again i mean simplicity is boring but i swear it's ever since i started to just focus on the simple movements i love lunging i mean it's by far my favorite lift i mean there is a no if i had to trade the squat you know squat i if squat deadlift or lunging probably my my top three favorite Indeed. movements I'm, I'm picking i'm picking lunch i mean all day i love it it's like you can just you know like you do a i don't know it just it just it really works everything out and it's so simple and mm -hmm. if you want to you know kill yourself go lunge distance i mean seriously go try to lunge one lap around the track you'll die yeah i saw you and, do that workout and i was like no uh i don't even do <laughs> it is it is so brutal yeah you not walk afterwards oh it is horrible but it's good i don't know i like it yeah man hey again you do something it's simple it's you just do it consistently that's the whole yeah. if there's anything anyone gets from this just be, be consistent just, yeah, keep just, it simple just be, like be consistent and master yeah. the basics man Exactly. All right, man. Let's go into these last two questions here, and then uh, we'll kind of call it here at yeah. thirty mark. Um, so you don't have to answer this one. This was an idea. What's your most embarrassing workout story? <laughs> oh man, I got. I definitely got. I'll one. share mine after. <laughs> oh, dude, I got. I got one. So this was again going back to uh, before I like had any idea what I was doing in the gym. I just was you know, would just, just hop on a machine and, and, and let it rip. I, um, so I moved to St. Louis after school and knew nobody. I got a job up there and uh, wanted to join my local gym. And, um, you know, I'm like, took, took some pre, I'm like ready to go first day in there. And um, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna just get some legs in. And I went to the Smith machine, you know, the, the mm -hmm. track bar. And uh, I was like gonna like lean back, kind of pushing on the bar. I don't do this anymore, but I used to like love doing that for just like quad kind of workout. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just put a shit ton of weight on there because people around me, I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm gonna make a statement here. And um, I go down, and it really wasn't my fault, but I was so embarrassed. They, the damn gym, didn't have the Smith machine drilled down to the floor. No. What? So I go and the thing slides out, the bar comes over me, and I'm literally stuck like a uh, like you know, like well, luckily the safety thing was there, but I'm stuck, I cannot move. <laughs> I'm, uh, so I'm like, it's my first lift. And I'm screaming, like, hey, someone help me, someone help me. And like, yeah, I was just I was like, I, I think I gotta go sign up for a different gym after this. Oh <laughs> dude, that's <laughs> just so embarrassing new city um, new you <laughs> just like i was just like folded like a pancake i couldn't move god i was like but yeah they should nail that damn thing down <laughs> that's man you're lucky no one was filming that's just oh, the kind of stuff you'd see online uh dude when i was at campus rec at UK, yeah. oh, man i went in there same thing took some pre-workout i'm like tunnel vision <laughs> And some guy like left 315 on the squat rack over there. Oh, man. And so I'm not even thinking. I'm just like focus, you know. And I pull all three plates off of one side. <laughs> and so the whole bar goes flying across the gym because oh, it like damn. tips over and it like makes this loud crash. I'm like, oh my God. So I like pick yeah. it up and the little guy, you know, the guys who like walk around with the little. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The bad, the like lifeguards of the gym there come over, make yeah. sure I'm okay. I didn't get it all set up. And oh, then that's I, awesome. Oh, it gets better. Uh, <laughs> After that, I'm all embarrassed. Still tunnel vision. You know, it's itchy because it's C4 days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then 
I get it loaded up and I stand up and smack the top of my head on the squat rack bar. And <laughs> so you just got caught quits. Dude, I left. I left. <laughs> <laughs> These girls were over on the deadlift platform and they were just like, Are you okay? And I was just yeah. Like, I'm fine. I just left it. Oh my God. Hey, that's awesome, man. It was bad. But that's yeah, it happens. It's pre workout. It that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blame it on the C4. Right. That's too much caffeine for me. But <laughs> uh, all right, man. What's the worst advice you've ever received? I think um I think and I'm I'm sure everyone here knows this, but um that lifting heavy like like results in bulkiness. That is, I don't know, maybe you have a different opinion, but I'll say mine. Man, when I want to get cut and look jack, I'm doing heavy ass reps or heavy ass movements with low rep. And then I move right into like a kind of like a like a hit, like kind of like a little, you know, so I'm going heavy and then I'll I'll do like some push-ups or burpees or whatever right after that. But um just like the fact of like we're trying to get cut, like you gotta do like high rep, low weight, just ridiculous. If you wanna get, you know, you wanna get abs, freaking deadlifts and squat a lot. <laughs> and that's that that's what works for me. You just gotta be strong. You gotta get strong, man. You gotta move, you gotta do all that stuff. It's yep. it all adds to it. Well man, dude, thank you for doing this. I'm excited yeah, to get this blasted. Um We'll go ahead, we'll cut the recording off, and we'll go there from there, man. I appreciate cool. you doing this. Yeah, thanks, guys. So, hey, awesome. Oh, hey, tell me, um, where can we find you? Uh, yeah. Where's your, what's your info? Yeah, so financialfitnesswithtom.com kind of rhymes, so uh, remember that. And then uh, my Instagram handle is just financialfitnesswithtom. And, uh, guys, you'll, you'll, you'll get a lot out of it. It's um, I'm, I'm always posting just straight facts, so uh, things that people aren't thinking about um there's not a lot of finance personal finance instagrams out there to my, to my knowledge so um just trying to trying to deliver uh posts that people can take and immediately take action on um and uh it's, it's been a, it's been fun but yeah financial fitness with tom uh is where you can find me on instagram nice man i look forward you're doing those live videos and those are i like those i like tuned in the other day and i was like oh damn i didn't even think about that but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so you're putting out quality content though. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, sure everyone should uh check out Tom. And, yeah, we'll uh have to bring you on here next time. Yeah.